that. It is wonderful to be here tonight. You know, if I could bottle up the energy that's in this room right now, I could invent a new kind of rocket fuel. We'd be on Mars in no time flat. This is fantastic. We have much more in common than you might think. Sure, I've been off the planet, gone pretty fast. I've done those kind of things. But the keys to success in that venture are the exact same things, really, when you get down to it, when you boil it down to the essence, that you will need. And we're going to start with a couple stories, a couple nature stories, actually, metaphors, if you will. Let's start with, uh, I'll take a poll here. You've got two images on the screen. You've got an eagle, lone eagle flying high. It looks magnificent, doesn't it? Our national symbols, magnificent bird. You've also got a penguin rookery, very crowded, chaotic, looks a little confused in there, perhaps even a little smelly, you know, in, in that kind of environment. Which one of those two images best portrays the real world workplace? <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course we all get it. <laughs> the penguin rookery, absolutely. And what happens is that one penguin leader leaves the rookery and goes down by the edge of the ice. Uh, others start to follow. And then that brave penguin leader dives into the water, facing all those threats there, the, the sharks, the seals, the uh, budget cuts, all of the things, all of the <laughs> threats that we face, but does it anyway. And what happens? The, what happens? Guy, you've all seen March of the Penguins. They all follow, right? Exactly. We don't have to be the lone eagle to be a leader. We don't have to have the charisma of a John F. Kennedy. We can be that brave little penguin leader who recognizes that, well, you know what? I know what the right thing to do here is. I'm going to set an example. I'm going to influence for good, and I'm going to have the courage to try. And as we head out and do that, people will follow. They recognize that. Who is to say what is impossible? For the dreams of yesterday are the hopes of today and the realities of tomorrow. Those are optimistic, visionary words, but I love that they came from a real nuts and bolts technical guy. Dr. Robert Goddard, inventor of the liquid-fueled rocket engine. You know, his diligence, hard work, discipline, coupled with that long-range vision, enabled humankind to live this age-long dream of breaking free of the bonds of gravity, flying out into space. It's been my privilege on uh, three separate occasions to break those bonds of gravity, to go fly on his technology, to fly into space, and partake of what has been called the greatest human adventure. But also, it's a great venture, one that requires teamwork, leadership, innovation, peak performance at the very limits of human capabilities to really be successful. Rick Sirfoss, nine years in the United States Astronaut Corps, 40 days in orbit, three NASA shuttle missions, crew member and mission commander, sharing his experiences and skills with audiences all over the country, his topics range from effective team building to adaptability and peak performance. He has contributed to National Geographic magazine, the Discovery Channel, the BBC, and Dr. Stephen R. Covey's book, The Nature of Leadership. It's a component which I believe absolutely firmly is the single most important thing for a leader to have, and that is trustworthiness. The ability to not only have incredible competence and that people can recognize you're a real expert in your field, but also that they will trust you and recognize your integrity is foremost and there in front of everything else. Obviously we have to have that as we've developed uh, the skills and the ability to trust each other going to space, but it's crucial and absolutely the single most important thing in your dealings with other people. And every role that you take on, you should consider yourself in a leadership role. You lead your customers, you teach them, you develop solutions to their problems. Definitely leadership roles and absolutely the most important thing you can bring to them is uh, the worthiness of their trust. I have a chance to work with a, another entrepreneurial new space group out in California. Very small company with about 35 people in it and I get to test fly their rocket propelled technology demonstrator aircraft. It's the only liquid fueled rocket propelled airplane in the world it's a phenomenal project, and it's just the tip of the iceberg for some other great projects that we're uh, going to move forward with. They understand speed and agility. We can have a concept come from the, the test pilot's mind on how, for example, the throttle quadrant ought to be, go to the chief engineer's mind and, uh, just over uh, breakfast in the morning, then we'd throw it out on the design uh, tools uh, an hour later and have a machinist work up a prototype in the afternoon and then the next day be testing it out. That's that level of speed and agility I talked about. Rick Searfoss, launching teams, exploring leadership. As shuttle commander for the STS-90 Neurolab mission in 1998, Rick Searfoss built a team so intricately synchronized that hundreds of neurological experiments were completed, far beyond the ambitious goals of this, the most complex space research mission ever. 
my real job as commander is to work the matrix. Every interrelationship between everyone on the crew. I expanded that through uh, leadership opportunities I ha I've had since, that every team has to intersect and interact with all sorts of other teams. It's not operating in isolation. So think of a matrix to the nth power and spend the bulk of your time and effort as a leader in strengthening the elements of that matrix and the relationships between teams. It's a, an investment well worth making. Well, let's wrap up with just a very short video clip here. It's going to be kind of a contrast. We're going to show with no sound a little bit of a shuttle landing from the, the technical perspective, the long range cameras there at Kennedy Space Center. And then we're going to cut to a clip that my daughter took as she and the rest of my family are all I want you to hear a little bit of this as I talk. Very different view of the same event. Yep. Just like you gotta hear this part. He's on Earth now. He's on Yes, and he landed this time. And I will challenge you right now to take two very different views of your work responsibilities, your situation. One is recognizing that, yeah, I'm in a technical field. I need to stay abreast of that. I need to uh, perform in that area. But also recognize I'm in a human field. I exercise influence on others in a formal and in an informal way. I can help build up teams. I can make my organization more effective. It is a big world. It's a huge world, in fact. You know, having gone around it, even at five miles a second, it takes 90 minutes to get around it. Yet it's not so big that you as an individual cannot make a difference. You have to truly choose to forge your future. Now, as you do that, keep a spirit of optimism with you. As you can see down underneath, the last rays of the setting sun are shining a nice golden glow to the bottom of the cloud. To me, it's proof positive that not every cloud has a silver lining. Sometimes it's even better. Sometimes it's a golden lining. And I want for you, my hope as you go into this conference is that all of your linings are golden. As you face the challenges and difficulties and, and efforts that you go through, that you do so with a balance of a firm purpose, smart programs, a genuine, honest concern and care for people, and finally, a wise perspective. I believe that if you do that, that you will find resounding mission success, whatever your endeavors, whether they're individual, team, or leadership challenges that you face. So good luck, have a great conference, and all the best. Thanks. Sear Boss, launching teams, exploring leadership. For more information, contact the provider of this video.